Guys, it is time for another Agase Adventures. Hello, hello, hello. This is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley D Reactions. And today I am here for another episode of Agase Adventures, episode number five. What? Can you even believe that? I know it's been a little bit since I've done the last one, but there were, with the comeback, there was so much going on that I figured I would take a break from Agase Adventures. And now since they have finished doing official promotions, they are still doing fan signs, but they are not promoting on music shows anymore. I figured now would be a great time for me to go ahead and continue on with Agase Adventures. And I'm going to do that with my bias journey. In case you have been here from the beginning, you might know that I have gone on quite a trip with my bias for GOT7 and it has officially settled in completely and I am very comfortable with my bias and my bias list, at least my holy trinity. And yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about a little bit about that journey and my bias and all of that. So let's just go ahead and start at the very beginning. Also, the first person that ever caught my eye was Bam Bam. And there was just something about him. He was really cute, really adorable and just right and he just he snagged my attention before i knew who any of them were i was like i like that guy <laughs> and it wasn't until i found out right after that bam bam was a 97 liner and that's something that doesn't really bother me as much now but when i was first getting into k-pop the idea that all these guys were so much younger than me really messed with my mind a lot and it took a while for me to kind of accept that seven years isn't all that crazy and while it's definitely a larger gap it's nothing that's like unfeasible and that I should calm myself seven years is okay seven years is actually my limit so he's like one of the youngest 97 liners are the youngest that I even think about but that's another story as I started to watch more I was drawn to Mark and Jackson and they kind of, there was just something about them that I just really, really loved. The energy that Jackson exuded and just the coolness that Mark exuded drew me in and I didn't know who I was going to pick and I was bouncing back and forth for a time. I thought that Mark was my actual bias, but that didn't really hold very long and I realized that it was Jackson that was my bias more than anything. But for a time, I was just, I would just say, if you ask me who my bias was, I would just say Markson because I was that smitten by the pair of them. But it, it really did after that, it kind of petered down a little bit and flattened out. And I was just like, wait, Jackson's really my bias of the two. Jackson's the one that I feel like I would enjoy and have a lot of fun talking to and after having met him because I had gotten the chances to meet him in high touch I really fell even more for Jackson there was just something about Jackson that drew me in even more and I just I love 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 Jackson I was just perfectly fine and in love with the idea of being Jackson biased because Jackson is such a sweet guy. The things that he posts on his Instagram, the things that he says, he's always caring about Agassiz and family and obviously the members of GOT7 and he's just a really caring guy and it's really easy to see why people love him. I've heard people that have met him like more than just like high touch and like photo op. Um, that have said that he's just such a character and such a nice guy and I completely 100% believe that when I heard that from their mouths I was just like I wish I could be in your shoes to know to be able to experience that but he's really just such a lovely guy it's hard not to love him but the problem is despite all this love for Jackson which remained really steady through I would say about Toronto which was in November or so there's this one lingering factor that had been bugging at me and nagging at me back since July when I'd seen them during fly tour 
and it popped up again during Toronto and then it really nailed itself solid during the Turbulence Tour and that was bam bam. So as you guys probably remember because I was just saying this a few minutes ago, bam bam stole my attention initially but I kind of pushed him back down. I shoved him back out. I mean I still love Maritai Kong but I shoved Bam Bam down. He was the baby. He's one of the babies. But after a while, I realized that I can't, I can't just, I can't let that stop me. Bam Bam was call, coming for me. During Fly Tour, he held my hand twice throughout the show. Like he just, he, he held my hand. Like he could have held somebody else's hand the second time but he held my hand again. And it was like only a few seconds later, but he reached out for my hand twice. And I was just like, Bam, I love you. And every time I've had interactions with Bam, they've been absolutely amazing, the absolute best. He's the sweetest guy ever. And I've called him my prince. I call him my prince every time I see him now. And it's funny because during the um, Turbulence Tour, I did go to four of the stops and by the end of the tour, it was really, it was fun because he remembered me, like legitimately remembered me. And um, he mentioned it during the tour stops. And it's just like, when, when I did the high touch, he actually mentioned that he's like, oh, I remember you. And it just made me feel really, really great because I absolutely love Bam. But that's actually one of the nails in the coffin that was just like, why am I holding out on this? Because even after Turbulence, before even the um, Turbulence tour, um, and when I say after Turbulence, I mean the album, <laughs> before the Turbulence tour, um, just seeing them go through like just the promotions of Turbulence and then seeing all the end of the year stuff, I found myself not saving pictures of Jackson but of Bam Bam and I found myself seeking out Bam Bam stuff and just constantly going for more and more Bam Bam. And it probably should have been a sign right there in my head that Bam Bam really was my bias, but I, I think I just didn't want to accept it because um, I do still absolutely adore Jackson, but <sighs> Bam stole my heart and he's just so precious and he's so sweet and he's always engaging and he's just such a lovely guy and he really deserves all the love and none of the hate and I just I love Bam Bam and he's just absolutely he's wonderful and he's lovely and he's managed to ride to the top and sit at the top now for a while now and I've fully accepted that I'm Bam biased and I think it's okay. He may be younger than me, but that's fine. That's fine. It's not like anything's gonna ever happen. So it's it's fine that I love Bam. And he's just, he's lovely. And I just, I can't wait to see him at more events and do high touches and photo ops. And I just really want to see Bam more. I just, I love that guy. I love him. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of my bias journey. I started with Bam. And now I've ended with Bam and it, everything just feels right. I love Bam. <laughs> but why don't you guys let me know who your bias is and what your bias journey was. Um, I know I didn't talk about J-Bum who is my absolute bias wrecker. He's had the bias wrecker spot since pretty much almost since the beginning. Um, after a couple months he, he nailed it nailed in that spot and it hasn't let go. Even now that Jackson is no longer my bias, j -Bum is still my bias wrecker. Um, but yeah, if you would like a video about the bias wrecker situation and how All Gut 7 messes me up as far as having bias wreckers, let me know in the comments down below. I will maybe do that for the next video. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. I'm out.